I'm Victoria Cooksey, and today we're making gluten-free brownies. So they're gluten-free and they are dairy-free, but they do happen to have almonds and eggs in them, just so you keep that in mind for what you like, what you need. To start off, I've melted three ounces of dark chocolate. You want to go with 70 to 71% dark chocolate. And remember, chocolate, just like when you're cooking with wine, use the chocolate in this that you like the taste of. Now to experiment with this recipe, sometimes I made it with Equal Exchange 71% bar, sometimes I made it with Theo's 70% bar. Both tasted good, so again, just use the ones, whatever chocolate you got on hand that you like. And if you're like me and you happen to be a reviewer, you might have a bunch of partial bars around, just add those up to make three ounces and you're good to go too. In with the dark chocolate, I also put a third cup of coconut oil, so I melted it all together and that's whisked and melted. Now we're gonna add fourth cup dark brown sugar. This is organic dark brown sugar, lightly packed. And a half cup of organic cane sugar. And just whisk that in. You're not trying to dissolve this all the way, just get it coated. Da -da 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 -da. Once that's in, then you're gonna go with three eggs. So by this point, the chocolate should be cool enough to put the eggs in because you stirred the sugar in. But if not, you know, give it a minute or two. Then add your eggs. Whisk to combine. I've actually found that depending on the amount of time I whisk the eggs in, it sometimes changes the texture just a little bit. So I actually don't like to over mix here. Which is funny because you think, oh, if it was gluten in it, it would do something like that. But the eggs actually can do that too. Now to make life a little bit easier on you, I actually left chemical, le chemical leaveners out. Now those are like baking soda, baking powder. And we talked in a video in the past about which ones you use with alkalized cacao, which ones you use it with natural cocoa powder. So this time you don't have to worry, you can use what you've got. So if it says cocoa powder, if it says cacao powder, if it says alkalized, if it says natural, if you have craft. Whatever you got on hand, you can use it in this and it's not gonna change the recipe. We got a fourth cup of the cocoa powder and I'm just gonna sift it in a little bit. Just because I find cocoa powder always seems to have a little bit of lumps in it no matter what brand you're using. You can always use something just to push it through a little bit. And then once you've got the lumps broke up, you can just dump what's in there in there and it's gonna be fine. So whisk again. Oh, also add in a fourth teaspoon of salt. For me, I don't whisk the salt because I find it always just ends up stuck in my sifter, so just depending what you got might change how you do it. These are brownies, we don't have to get too crazy with it, you know. Once the cocoa powder is just combined, the last ingredient for the brownie part is a half cup of super fine ground almond flour. That's gonna provide structure. It's gonna also, that along with the eggs keeps the coconut oil from separating out. And again, just whisk to combine. Just kinda go around the edge, make sure you've got everything in there. Just gonna take an extra second to make sure it's good. Oh, by the way, while you're doing this, have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. All right, next we've got eight by eight brownie pan lined with parchment paper. So I put a little coconut oil very lightly in there so that it would hold the parchment paper in place. I also like to cut the edges and overlap them and that just helps it stay in there a little better too. If you ever want a video on how to do just that, let me know. Okay, now the batter goes in. Now, if you only happen to have two eggs on hand, you could actually do this with just two eggs. Um, makes them slightly flatter and just changes the texture a bit, but in a pinch, it's gonna work. But I like how it tastes with the three eggs. It's funny, these were actually originally gonna be a cupcake recipe, and as I was working on it, I was like, you know, this recipe wants to be brownies, so brownies it's gonna be. And sometimes you have to just go with that when you're doing a creative project, just what is it telling you to do, you know? Listen to it. Take your spatula and just push it into the edges. Normally I would take just an extra second or two for that, but since we're filming, I'm not gonna spend all your time with the spatula here. 
You can also do just a little shake just to even it out. Because I find however you spread brownie batter, sometimes it can keep those lines because this one is a thicker batter. So just do that a bit, it's gonna flatten it out. Now you can leave it just like that and that's okay. What I'm gonna do a little half and half here today and by that I mean I'm gonna take some cacao nibs and sprinkle over half of these. Now obviously this has almond flour in it but if you happen to be doing cookies or something that are nut free, these make a great crunch without adding nuts. So definitely cocoa nibs are so versatile to have around. We can also talk about that another day if you want. Then on the other side, because you know, it's good to have options. Last week we talked about the Villa Kuyaya chips and these are kind of smaller ones. So I love sprinkling these on brownies because they're like kind of like a mini chip. These are at 80% cacao from, cacao from Ecuador that is. So just sprinkle these all over. And you know, don't like overcrowd it, but definitely make sure there's enough so every bite has some. Okay, so we've got this ready to go. Now I'm gonna put it in the oven for 23 minutes. My oven, 23 minutes is the exact amount. Your oven, maybe you're gonna have to mess around with it a little bit, but you know, we'll see. See what you think. This is gonna be, um, if you put a knife in, it's gonna come out clean, but it's still gonna stay moist. When I take these out of the oven, I like to just let them set in the pan two to three minutes. Kind of sets up the structure a little bit so that when I lift these out to a cooling rack, they don't like crease or break up. Okay, so these are ready. And then by the magic of 4.30 a.m., I happen to have made a uh, set already, even though that way we don't have to wait because who wants to wait? I'll do a photo close up of these too so you can see what they look like. I cut these into nine pieces, but you can do whatever you like. If you're not having them today, just store them in an airtight container for three to four days and they'll stay good. Now the question is, in the comments below, how do you like your brownies? Gluten free? Do you like them with flour instead? Are you gonna go with nibs? Are you gonna go with chocolate chips on top? What kind of chocolate are you using in the batter? Do let me know, because I'm always curious. And be sure to follow me on Instagram, and if you need exact measurements for anything, I'll put that in the area below the video as well, so you don't even have to worry. Thanks for watching, and I have a lot of brownies to go eat, so if you'll excuse me. Bye-bye. <laughs>